Hey guys, my name is Matt Kendall. I'm a full-time photographer and videographer. If you've been making videos on a Canon DSLR, chances are you've noticed two different options to choose from when it comes to selecting your desired frame rate to create videos. The first being IPB and the second being All Eye. The difference between these two is the way they compress your video files. A simple idea of what each of these can do to your video files is that All Eye will offer better image quality while giving you the flexibility to color grade since it's retaining a ton of information within the video file. IPB can still offer you good image quality but provides you way more storage space on your memory cards because it compresses the files three times smaller than All Eye. Now why All Eye requires more file space is because when you are recording, All Eye is treating each frame as a single image and is retaining all the information it possibly can from each frame. IPB, however, uses less file space because it's gonna retain a ton of information from one frame, calculate how the next few frames will play out, and then repeat the process again and again. This results in smaller file size, but retains less information in the video file. This is why you can run through a 128 gigabyte SD card super quickly if you film an entire wedding day using all i ipb won't give you this issue in terms of storage space now some would say that all i and ipb don't show much difference in image quality which to the naked eye at first glance can be true and some videographers i know just like to stick with ipb because it saves file space and they don't see any difference when they filmed in all i anyway the bottom line is you have two options to choose from that can help you either improve image quality or save space on your memory cards. I've found that IPB works great for me when I know I'm not making drastic movements with the camera or even filming an entire wedding ceremony that lasts over half an hour. All I works great for me when I know I'm going to be moving around a lot with the camera as well as just ensuring any detail shots I capture are going to have the best possible image quality. Now, if you're a Sony user, they have similar compression options, but they're labeled as XAVCS, which would be like IPB, and XAVCS-I, which is like all I. I'm mainly a Canon user, but I wanted to throw that out there just in case to all the Sony users who are watching this video. Now, hopefully that has given you a better idea on what these format options are. And if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Also, thank you guys so much for your support on my channel. I've made it to over 100 subscribers recently and I couldn't have done it without you guys. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel as well as liking this video. I'll be coming out with more content on both photography and videography very soon. Thank you guys very much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.